Hi, and welcome to another episode of Potex Tech Lightning. In this episode, I'm going to go through 10 important networking components in Azure. The idea is to just give you a quick overview so you know the names and you know a little bit what they're doing. So when you go into those meetings or discussions, you are armed with some powerful knowledge and afterwards you can always go look for more in-depth information. So how about we get started? Let's go now. Let's put several concepts and terminology in Azure surrounding networking on the table right here, right now. First off, Azure Express Route VPN. We talked already about this in an earlier video, in the video five things an Azure architect should know. So check that out, link is in the description. Here in this video, we're gonna talk about Virtual WAN, Azure Load Balancer, Application Gateway, Web Application Firewall, Azure Firewall, Azure DNS, Content Delivery Network, CDN, Azure Front Door, Azure Route Server, Traffic Manager, Azure DDoS Protection. So let's start and work our way through, through from the top. The Virtual WAN, also known as VWAN, is a managed network service by Microsoft. It brings many networking components, such as security and routing functionality, into a single operational interface. There are two SKUs, BASIC, which supports site-to-site VPN only. Then you have the standard SKU, which supports Express Route, point-to-site and site-to-site VPN, Azure Firewall, Interhub and VNet to VNet transitioning through the virtual hub, NVA in a virtual WAN. Next up is the Azure Load Balancer. This one operates at OSI layer 4, the transport layer. Layer 4 load balancers, they're completely unaware of the content of the data. It forwards the request to the backend. The backend can be Azure Virtual Machines or instances in a virtual machine scale set, VMSS. Now onto the application gateway, which unlike the load balancer, it operates at layer 7 the application layer. This means that it can actually inspect the traffic and perform advanced functions, such as SSL offloading, and be used for HTTPS traffic. These are usually placed in the same subscriptions as the applications themselves. Combined with the Web Application Firewall, WAF, you can route incoming traffic from the scary internet directly to the application gateway. Be aware that strictly speaking, the application gateway is not an IPS intrusion prevention system, nor does it perform intrusion detection system, IDS. Moving on, we find the mighty Azure Firewall. Think of it as a managed cloud-based network security service within Azure. There are two tiers, standard and premium. With the standard tier, you have built-in high availability, application FQDN filtering rules, FQDN and service tags, it does threat intelligence, force tunneling, and a few other features. The premium SKU, you there have TLS inspection, intrusion detection and prevention system, IDPS, you can do fine-grained URL filtering, you have web categories if this will function as a forward proxy. Also, for DNS implementation, it, in Azure, it's best practices to use the Azure Firewall as a DNS proxy server. Which now brings us to Azure DNS, which is always an important component in any Azure deployment. You can use your own private or public domains within Azure. It's closely linked to Azure Private DNS, which is a private namespace and can be used for many resources. For example, private endpoints, they require the use of Azure Private DNS. Content Delivery Network, CDN. Now this is a general concept where you have a distributed network over several geographies. You deliver high availability and performance by caching content closer to the user. You can cache static objects loaded from Azure Blob Storage. You can cache a web application or any publicly accessible web server. Azure Front Door. This is similar to a CDN, except it operates at OSI layer 7 for load balancing capabilities for your applications. It does 
Dynamic Site Acceleration (DSA), TLS SSL Offloading, End-to-End -end TLS Encryption, Web Application Firewall, and more. The supported protocols are HTTP, TTPS, and HTTP2. Azure Route Server. This is the new kid on the block. It simplifies dynamic routing between your network virtual appliance NVA and your actual virtual network. You no longer need to manually update the routing table in your NVA. UDRs no longer need to be manually updated whenever your NVA announces new routes. As long as your NVA supports PGP, you can pair it with the Azure Route Server. Traffic Manager, now that sounds like something we could use in our daily commute. In this case with Azure, it's actually just a DNS load balancer. When the end user requests a DNS name, Azure responds with details to direct the user to a certain location or data center. A good system here can speed up the response time and even provide better availability. Remember to use protection kits, which in this case means Azure DDoS protection. This is a feature which is enabled per VNet. It comes in two flavors, basic and standard. The basic SKU offers active traffic monitoring and always on detection, along with automatic attack mitigations. Standard SKU includes all the basic functionality and it adds higher availability, cost protection, metrics and alerts, reports, and some other feature. Thank you for watching these 10 amazing concepts of networking in Azure. I would say stay tuned to this amazing channel because me, Patrick, will continue to give you in-depth information about all of these services in separate videos. Until next time, stay safe and see you.